Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to let you all know that I have been sick. For those who are within my community and have seen the different posts I have posted, I am getting over being sick. Sadly, my voice is taking a lot longer than I thought it would and I have to do this voiceover for this video, so enjoy me sounding like a rat. Today we're going to go over secrets and unknowns within Swim. With this mod now being out for a while, you all have been figuring out a lot of secrets within the mod, which is super exciting. For those who don't know, Swim has some secret coats which are obtainable through gameplay and also some other hidden gameplay nooks that can make your time on this mod very fun. This should be an obvious warning but this video will include secrets that some may want to find out themselves. There will also be content in this video that isn't exactly a secret but it's insider information that may make the mod feel more personal than it is and just some cool facts you all may want to know. So if you're up to learning some deep dark secrets or just learning some cool facts then I hope you enjoy the video. The start of Swim with this being the first part, I felt it was right to go into why and how Swem came to be. A lot of you know that Hannah, the owner of Swem, focused on this project due to the love of her own horse, Lucy. But there were also some other motivations. When Hannah was first starting Swem, she wanted basic walk trot animations, armors, coats, basically vanilla Minecraft but with enhancements. Hannah wasn't sure if anybody wanted to use this. She started to see simple items in the Minecraft equestrian community being used that could use some help, like glass in the wash tall or a bridle hook being made of an item frame and a tripwire hook. It was obvious this community needed more detail and was desperately requesting more attention to the equestrian world within the game. This may not be a super secret, but it's more of an insider look of the background of Swem and how the plans to make a smaller Minecraft mod turned into something so much more. Now we move on to the biggest section of the video, the hidden coats of Swem. There are 16 secret coats, all achieved through gameplay, some of them being horses from games or shows you may have seen. The fun part about getting these throughout gameplay is that the item used to get these secret coats relates to the coat itself or the show slash game it was inspired from. Let's get right into the list. A friendly reminder that there are chapters to this video, so if you want to skip ahead to your favorite coat or you just want to skip from coat to coat, then feel free to do that. First is Epona from The Legend of Zelda. This coat can be granted by renaming the horse whistle. To make a horse whistle, combine the amethyst, a bone, a star worm, and an ender pearl. Put the horse whistle into the anvil and rename it to an ocarina, which is the instrument that Link uses to play Epona's song, which stops Epona from running from him in early gameplay. When you right-click a tame swim horse with this renamed whistle, it will convert the coat to the Epona coat. Maybe you can play a cool tune for your new horse as well. Toss a coin to your Witcher. That tune is exactly what should be done to achieve the legendary Roach Coat from the Witcher game series. Except it will be changed to toss a coin to your Witcher's horse in this scenario. Rename an Iron Nugget coin and right click a tame swim horse and your horse will transform into the coat referenced from the trusty mare that Geralt bonded with in the game and now also show series. Whether you're a Witcher, a simple Minecraft player, or just a fan of the series, hopefully this coat will grant you an adventure. The next coat is Aggro from the Shadow of the Colossus. This coat can be shown by renaming the Lily of the Valley Mono, which is a character in the game. I can't say much more without giving spoilers. Right click your Tame Swim horse in order to gather this coat. Shadowmere is a horse in Skyrim the Elder Scrolls and is known through gameplay of withholding amazing strength and health. You can get the coat by renaming an iron sword Sithis, which is a deity from the game. Right click your Tame Swim horse with this sword. Hopefully your own version of Shadowmere will lead you into amazing adventures as well. Rapidash is a coat referenced by the Pokemon and is marked as a fire horse. This coat has an amazing color and mane and it can be granted by renaming a blaze rod Ponyta, which is the Pokemon that evolves into Rapidash starting from level 40. Right click your Tame Swim horse with a blaze rod to change the coat. Look, they're glowing. Can it be? For the honor of Grayskull. Thank you, my friend. Swiftwind is Adora's beloved alicorn that could talk. He had his own sort of transformation and share a princess of power. To get this coat, you need to rename a diamond honor of Grayskull. Right click your tame swim horse with this diamond. This coat may not grant the horse the ability to talk on your Minecraft world, but it will give a cool run edition of Swiftwind. Unusual looking pony. His name's Bob. Bob, hello Bob. Next is Bob from the show Free Rain. This horse is owned by a girl named Becky, which is one of the first clues that a lot of players looked into when trying to get this coat. In order to get Bob, you'll need to name a black English bridle Becky, and then right click your Tame Swim horse with a black bridle. The next horses are part of the rare coat section, starting with Farka, Tan's horse coat. Rename the orange dye Zebra, and then right click a Tame Swim horse to see the transformation. 
The next horse is Serene, which is the paint source coat, which I have barely seen on any player media, so I'm excited to see it more often. To get this coat, you will need to rename a white dye zebra and right click a tame swim horse. You can add it to the previous horse and start your little Zorse collection. The last source in the secret coat list is Calahope, which is a dark Zorse. You can add the third Zorse to your barn by renaming a brown dye zebra and right clicking your tame swim horse. One out of the three Chimera horses is Courier. The mix of colors creates a Calico Chimera. This coat can be granted by renaming a Feather Herald and then right clicking a Tame Swim horse with it. The second Chimera coat is Guardian, the Bay slash Gray Chimera coat, and can be achieved by renaming a Shield Duty. Right click your Tame Swim horse after this for the coat. The third Chimera coat is Royal. The brindled chimera coat. To get the royal coat, take a gold ingot and rename it Rain, and right click your tame swim horse to be granted the coat. I saw a lot of comments after Swim's release on how to get the peacock Appaloosa. This coat is absolutely beautiful and is known as Riptide. To get this coat, rename a prismarine shard, 13 horses, and right click a tame swim horse with it to get the Riptide coat. The next horse, replacing one of the original coats, is Van Gogh, who is a galaxy horse. To get this coat, there's an extended process involved. This process requires you to make a Galaxorium offering. For this, you will need to make the Vibrant offering, Earth offering, Life offering, Nova offering, and Ocean offering. A lot of offerings, I know. Here's a crafting recipe for each offering. For some of these, you may need special tools or to travel to multiple biomes. A lot of people have been getting these through Creative, but the process is up to you. Then, after this, you place the offering into the enchantment table, and it should give the Galaxium offering. This offering will look different. There will be difference. Now is the final climb, literally. Travel to positive 250 on the Y coordinates, whether it's by a dirt tower, a very tall mountain, or the magical gift of flying. Find your way there. Once you hit 250 or above, your Galaxium offering will turn into a Galaxia offering. Take this orb and right click a tame swim horse, and you will finally achieve the Van Gogh coat. The last coat is Solitaire, and this is a process as well. You will need to obtain Rainbow Dindin, and while it is easy to do in creative, it can also be done in survival too. First, craft a warmer egg recipe. There is no order, just toss the ingredients into a crafting table. Then, the cooler egg recipe. Then craft the rainbow egg using both the warmer and cooler egg. After this, take a brewing stand and brew water with the rainbow egg. You will obtain the rainbow chic. Smelt this potion into a furnace to get the dehydrated rainbow. After this, take sugar and combine it with the dehydrated rainbow. You will get rainbow sweet feed. There is an order for this recipe, so follow it exactly. Combine wheat with this on the recipe, and you will get the heavy feed. After this, you will need to get the rainbow dry feed. A lot of food, I know. Take the heavy feed and a bucket, and you will get the dry feed. Let's go into the rain when it's next raining, and walk into the rain holding this. It will turn into rainbow din din. Do not put this into a feeder or attempt to put this elsewhere. Right click your tame swim horse to achieve the solitaire coat. If you generated a non-flat world with swim, you will find naturally spawning abandoned stables. This is like a village, it's random and will spawn in your world as a structure. You could use this however you want, as a quick shelter to pass by or to fix up broken parts and move in. If you dig directly underneath the pantry in the house, you will find a basement. Did you know there is a basement within the basement? If you dig to the side of the original basement, you will find another room with more loot and chests. If you put just the western or adventure leg wraps on a horse or unrender the saddle, you will see a cute hidden heart underneath the saddle. And if you look at the adventure leg wrap texture in your inventory, it also has a little heart. Sweet Boy's coat also has a heart on it. Hearts all around. This may not be a secret to some, but it's definitely a nice way to show how the textures came to be. Whether it was from a reference or from Hannah's personal experience with products transformed into the pixelated versions. For example, the bag of shavings is referenced from the shavings brand that she used for her horses. Or the sweet feed was made from the brand she used. I can't explain to you all the absolute pain it was to find the reference photo for the sweet feed, by the way. Hannah and I were searching for like an hour. There are also a lot of other items that are going off of reference. Here are just a few of them for you all to see.
Hungry time is known as the time when the horses are hungry or eating. Ever see the little particles appear above the horse when you apply the brush, give it a treat, or feed it? These particles are also part of that. Hungry time is also called this because it's their actual name in the code. These particles have names, and yes, it's in the code as well. Purple being woot, green being yay, gray being meh, orange bean ugh, and red bean bad. These particles show you if the horse is liking what it's eating or how it's being treated, so pay attention to those for an indicator. The mercy blade was originally made for staff to offer mercy on animals when we had to kill them for production reasons. The mercy blade was modeled after a butcher's mercy knife, for a one-slice humane end for an animal's life. Not only is it one hit, so we don't have to beat them to death, but they also don't scream either, so it's a peaceful death as well. Wormy Boy is a summonable worm creature that was a birthday gift for Eric, Swem's main animator. This worm creature can be led on a lead, baas like a sheep, and drops the loot of a sheep once killed. Some Wormy Boy appreciation. There was a lot of curiosity around Swem horse armor, so I wanted to explain it a little bit. Hannah designed Amethyst horse armor to Swem prior to Minecraft even adding Amethyst. And the other swim armor has some information too, like the USA armor. Hannah designed it because she is a patriotic freak. <laughs> Those were Hannah's words, not mine. The netherite armor was based off of dragons. The emerald armor was made for lace and is meant to look like elven armor. And copper armor made by Red Seal for Red Seal to capture the desert biome theme. All hail the cone. Ever notice in the early swim photos of the overabundance of cones? These cones were something that the team begged Legend to add. Legend was new to modding, but made it happen. Sweet Boy is our patron saint. We preach kindness and good welfare towards animals. There is cone and only cone. If you have ever gotten your pixelated hands on a swim shrimp, which you can get by doing the give command in creative, you will notice that it will generate lightning to hit the player. If you stand over your swim horse, it will strike the horse and the swim horse will begin playing pig step. This lightning will not harm the horse. The shrimp was created as a moderation joke, and when a user did a battle on beta, they'd get a shrimp. Delphi is the only player that the lightning doesn't affect. She holds the power. Alrighty everyone, those were the secrets of SWAM. I hope you all learned some stuff from them and you guys are able to go and try out these own little secrets in your game as well. If you guys liked this video, don't forget to comment your favorite part and like and subscribe to show your support. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day, stay healthy and safe, and I will see you in the next video or stream.